Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a mushroom fairy landscape. So we have whimsical style of painting this week and this is done on an 11 by 14 inch canvas panel that I actually painted black. I used the Liquitex Basics Mars Black to paint the entire canvas black. Um, the great thing about the canvas paintings that have the black background is it's the perfect painting to recycle a mess up painting with. So if you have a painting you're not happy with, instead of throwing the canvas away, you can always just cover it with a fresh layer of black paint. For the brushes, I used a three quarter inch flat wash brush and I also used that wash brush to cover my canvas first layer with black. A 12 bright brush, which is like a half inch flat brush. I used a number eight round brush and a number four round brush. So the brushes that have the red handles, those are the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes that I will link in this tutorial. The bright brush is a Royal and Lang Nickel brush. For the colors, I used Titanium White, Mars Black, Pyral Red, Alizarin Crimson Hue Permanent, that color is optional. I used it only a little bit, and if you don't use that color, it's fine. Raw Umber, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Primary Blue, Unbleached Titanium, and Cadmium Yellow Medium Hue. And then of course, you're welcome to substitute your colors for whatever brand of paint you're using, and you'll need a piece of chalk to do the initial drawing of the mushroom composition. So we're gonna start with a canvas that's already been painted black. So this is fresh canvas painted with one layer Mars black paint and let it dry and then proceed to this step. So we're gonna be using a piece of chalk to go ahead and draw our three mushrooms and our snail. Let's start in the center with our largest mushroom. A mushroom is a very easy thing to draw. It's simple shapes and lines. So let's start at the bottom part of the stem. I'm maybe a quarter inch above the very edge of the canvas and it's like a curved bottom. And then we go up, almost like you're creating a triangle and then it kind of curves at the top. So the top part of the stem is more narrow than the base. And of course you're welcome to kind of alter the shape a little bit. If you want to look at like different mushroom clip art pictures and change the style, you're definitely welcome to do that. And then we'll do the top piece, very large kind of triangular shape that is curved along the corners. And we have the part under part of it that's open and that's going to curve up and then go behind that top part of our stem and this chalk definitely will erase so if you want to alter the shape I like to use a baby wipe and it wipes the chalk off very nicely to help you kind of alter and adjust the shape and then we can go ahead and draw our second mushroom. So there's gonna be two smaller ones on the left and the right of the larger one. So this one, the stem, much, much smaller and thinner, but it's also going at an angle. So did the stem, the under piece, and then lightly drawing the top piece. And then we have another smaller one over here on the left. This one's going to be more vertical. Very simple, basic shapes and then a curved top. We don't see the under part of that one. So just kind of changing that style a little bit. And then we can get a little creative here. Uh, we can do kind of taller mushrooms with a very, very thin sort of stem. And then we can add more if we wanted to, but let's just kind of keep it down to four. And I'm not gonna draw all the vine fern pieces. Um, that would get very messy with the chalk. A lot of chalk would have to be erased for that. But I do want to draw the, the snail. So I have the, the shape of my snail all laid out. 
So let's draw his shell first. So kind of like you're drawing a half circle, but curve this bottom part right here and then make kind of an opening on the far right. So right here is where it kind of spirals around and the spiral kind of goes more towards the left of that shell. And then we can draw the rest of him. Tail area, the head that kind of looks down. So we have this other, the smaller mushroom on the right is kind of in the way, but we can adjust the head so it kind of goes overlapping the larger mushroom a bit. So this one, the head's gonna kind of go down this way. And of course you can change the direction of this if you want. So the head's gonna kind of sink down like that. And then we can draw the um, pointy lines, eyes, so two tentacles and two circles on the end of those. And then I ended up adjusting that a bit so it wasn't overlapping the mushroom on the right. So you can kind of change it a little bit till you get it how you like it. A lot of times when we do the initial drawing, it gets adjusted anyway when we start painting it in. So there is, that's all I'm going to draw with the chalk. So all the other details we're just gonna be adding with as we paint those in, but we have the basic composition in. And we're gonna start with the color Pyrol Red. So I love this red because it's a very opaque red. Most acrylic reds are tr translucent and they would require you to paint the layer white first and then red over it. So if you don't have Pyrol Red, um, I recommend priming the top part of the mushroom white first so that you'll have the bright red color in the end. Um, if, it, if you do have pyro red, then you don't need to prime that layer with white first. And I will be using the 12 bright brush. I also loaded my palette with titanium white and alizarin crimson hue permanent. That is the optional color I mentioned. It ended up not really being necessary, but it's a color to get some dark areas in the mushroom if you want to do it that way. So you can see how bright this red is and how it gives beautiful coverage against that black background. Um, but basically, I'm just filling that shape in. I'm using the 12 bright brush, using the tip of the brush for the smaller areas, larger, or the full width of the brush for that larger area. It helps if you just use the tip of the brush to just kind of outline the shape and then contour it in. You're just filling it in the direction that the mushroom goes. Right now we're just filling the shape in. In a little bit, we'll grab a bit of white to kind of help give a little bit of a highlight to this, but just fill the shape in now for with solid red. So before this dries, let's grab a little bit of white on the tip of our brush, mix it on the palette a little bit, and then let's take that and just with the full width of the brush, I'm just very, very gently painting these curved strokes in there that blend very quickly with that red, but it's just enough to kind of brighten that center. It's going to give our mushroom more of a, a three-dimensional look by doing that. I'm not doing this on the entire top part of the mushroom, just in the center, and it just kind of blends out. And then let's use that other color, the red, the alizarin crimson. Did not rinse my brush, although it might have been a good idea to get that white off the brush. Um, just on the bottom area, and you can see how little of a difference this makes. That's why I made that color optional, but it gives a little bit of a different kind of darkish red color towards the bottom part of our mushroom. 
gives it some color variation. You can add a little bit up here on the side. I don't want to mess too much with the center part that's supposed to be lighter. I'm just kind of taking it and kind of mixing it in a little bit on the edges. And then we can paint the top of the mushroom on the right. So the two smaller ones on the left, those ones I decided to paint kind of an orange color. So I'm not gonna do those ones red right now. I'm just gonna do this one red. Same technique, only this is a smaller guy. So I want to um, kind of be careful with the smaller areas. If you wanna to switch to a small round brush for this because it's easier, you're welcome, welcome to do that. Just outline it and then fill it in solid. And then you can do your little highlight thing with the white. And if you wanna use some of that alizarin and crimson for the bottom part, So next, we're gonna go ahead and load our palette with some raw umber, unbleached titanium, and then you will likely need to freshen up your titanium white if you need more titanium white on there. So we're gonna we're gonna be painting the stem and the under opening part of the mushroom. And I'm gonna switch to a number four round brush because there's a lot of curvy areas and that's a lot easier with the round brush. So let's go ahead and on our palette, let's mix brown and beige together. So we're gonna get kind of a darker version of that beige. It doesn't really matter how much brown, you can do equal parts, you can do, I did like a little less brown, so it's kind of lighter. Um, Cause I don't wanna get too dark because there's gonna be some darker areas in here that need to stand out. But with that first kind of darkish beige color, we're just going to paint this opening solid coat of that. So my paint strokes are going in that kind of long curved horizontal direction. Um, when I go to reload the brush, kind of mixing it as I reload, it might be a slightly different color because there's a different combination of beige or brown and that's okay. That color variation gives it more of an interesting look versus if it was just solid the same color. Just getting this all covered up. Um, the stem piece, we could, if we end up painting over that top part, that's fine. So I'm just gonna actually cover that so I make sure that this is all solid. And then for the stem piece, I'm gonna add more brown into it. So I wanna go darker so that it stands out. So I'm gonna take that and go ahead and just repaint that. Um, the top part of the stem ended up being a little bit higher than what was initially drawn. That was done on purpose. I wanted to bring that up higher. And the direction of the strokes are going vertical instead of left and right. So Again, slightly darker, adding more brown into that, kind of blending it on the canvas as I go. And just kind of adjusting the shape of that a little bit. Um, at the very end of this painting, I'm gonna add a fairy door down here at the bottom. So I wanna make sure that it's kind of wide enough for that door. I'm gonna add a little extra brown towards the middle and towards the left. So the left side of the stem is more shaded and the right side of the stem is gonna be more uh, highlighted. So I will add a little bit extra white on the right side. Blending this in on the canvas using wet on wet blending. If we want to give it more of like a three-dimensional shape, we can 
have our strokes kind of go curved in the middle. And then on the right side, I mentioned I'm gonna highlight that a little bit and then blend the rest of that in. For the under part of our mushroom, I'm gonna take my brown and add that brown in there. I'm gonna loosen that up a little bit with some water. But on the tip of the brush, I have that brown and I'm just gonna paint these diagonal strokes that go in here. I'm just dragging my brush out very quickly. So I'm just gonna do these diagonal strokes that go around that top part. So up here, the direction of those strokes change as I go around that top piece. So that gives that kind of texture in there. Add more brown to my palette. Um, go back in and add a second coat in there, make sure it's darker. Again, these are quick strokes going in that diagonal direction. And I'm just dragging the tip of the brush from the top part of the stem and then outwards and it just kind of like fades out. Gives it that dark shadowy texture look for the underside of that mushroom. Then I'm gonna go over that top part of the stem right here and give it a lighter color to get the edge piece to kind of stand out from the rest. So next I'm just gonna repeat that same technique that I did with the big mushroom and do the same thing to that little mushroom on the right. Um, wanna kind of clean this up a little bit too. So if you are erasing your chalk as you're painting, it's fine. You just wanna be really careful not to smudge any wet paint. You can also wait to the very end. But sometimes I like to clean it up as I'm going. And then I'll go ahead and paint our little guy over here on the right. Same colors, same sort of technique. Take my dark color and add the dark on the left side of the stem and towards the bottom. And do the little diagonal strokes that go in a ray direction around the top part of the stem. And then I'm also highlighting that right part, Get a little pop of white just on the right and towards the bottom or the top. And then our little guy is done. So our other two mushrooms, I decided to change the color of those to kind of an orange and yellow. You're welcome to just go ahead and paint them red if you like the look of the red, but I wanted to add some more pops of color into this painting overall. So this is cadmium yellow medium hue. 
and we can make a really pretty orange by mixing our pyrrol red with that yellow. To make orange, you'll need more yellow than red. So if you do equal parts, it'll still look red. If you do like three parts yellow, one part red, it'll look orange. And you can change that orange. If you add more yellow in there, it'll be more of a yellowish color versus this one's more of an orange color. Um, so basically just did this. So orange or these two colors um, with that yellow in there, it might, we might have some coverage issues. So you can see as I'm painting this, a lot of that black from the canvas is still showing through. So if you add a little pop of white in there, that helps brighten it a bit. Or we could have just painted that white first and then went back over it as after it dried. But because it's such a small mushroom shape, I decided not to do that. So for this one, I actually took that white and then grabbed some of that yellow. So that white mixed with that yellow color helps to brighten that up a bit. I'm just basically painting that top shape. These ones aren't gonna be super detailed, just solid color at the top. I'll add a little bit of the darker orange red color in the bottom. Makes it look like there's a little bit of an opening right there. And then I'll go ahead and paint the stem of both of these using a combination of that beige color with a little bit of brown. And I'll go ahead and erase some of this excess chalk. Being careful not to smudge any of the paint. Do the stem on this one. So these two mushrooms, I did not go in super detail with the shading and highlighting. I can add a little bit of brown in there, but we don't have to get super detailed with these. And I'm gonna gently erase around this mushroom and try not to erase my snail drawing. And next I'm gonna go ahead and paint the white dots that are on the two red mushrooms. You wanna make sure that everything is dry before you start painting these in. So I'm just using the number four round brush in a solid coat of titanium white. I'm gonna make various sized circles. They're kind of um, not perfectly shaped circles, so kind of imperfect circles, organic shapes. Some of them are going off the edge, so we only see half of the piece. Then you just draw the little, paint the little circle and then fill it in solid. Some of them can be more of an oval shape. And the circles down here are just more like little dots.
And then I'm going to repeat this for our little mushroom on the right. And then next I'm going to paint the snail. So I chose blue for the snail shell, um, but you're definitely welcome to change the color of this if you want. For the blue, since I'm doing blue and it's kind of a darker color, I'm going to paint the shell white first, sort of as a primer so that the blue will show up nice and bright. So I'm going to do this by just kind of outlining the shape. I want to paint this without losing that sort of spiral shape that I drew earlier. So I'm going to kind of outline the lines that are drawn with the chalk. I'm just going to fill this part in solid with the white. I'm going to take it and go in that kind of spiral direction so I don't lose that. This bottom part of the shell, it's overlapping part of that mushroom. I'm going to take that spiral there. So I didn't want to lose that design. I'm going to leave that part black so I don't lose that, but it's enough of white primer so that our blue will show up bright. So I'm going to go ahead and load the palette with the color primary blue. Again, you're welcome to change the color if you don't want to use this primary blue, if you want to use a different kind of blue. Without rinsing the brush, load that into the blue. So there's blue and white in my brush. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm just going to kind of paint the rest of that black there that didn't get painted. It's blue and white. I'm just going to take that and spiral it around without losing that spiral shape. So I'm not trying to cover up all that white. Some of that white is helping to keep that spiral line in there. And I'm going to keep painting in that circular direction. Outline that right part of the shell. Fill it in. It's going in the direction of that shape. Again, I don't want to lose that spiral shape. So the more I add blue to this, I just want to make sure I'm making that go in that spiral direction. And there's still that initial white line that was painted. Then I'm going to take my brown and mix it with the white so that I can paint the foot area, the bottom part of the sna snail. So brown and white mixed together. You can even use that beige color if you want. Just needs to be a lighter color than the blue shell so it stands out a bit. I'm just taking that, painting this, kind of curves and kind of contours that mushroom even though he's on the side of the mushroom. We still see it kind of overlapping part of it and that head area. I'm letting that brown kind of gently mix with that white on the canvas so it's not solid and kind of um, changes color a bit as it blends on the canvas. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of erase my chalk here, kind of clean this up a bit. Then I'm going to paint the two tentacles. So this one, you just need a really steady hand for this because these are very thin lines that are uh, start out kind of wide and then go pointed. So very thin line. And then the eye circle piece on the tip of each of them. So I did two, this one right here and this one can go down this way, the little circle piece.
then I'm going to use Mars Black to add some detailed texture to the foot area of the snail. So I rinsed my number four round brush off, loaded the tip of it in the Mars Black, and I'm going to do some stippling texture on the bottom. First I did kind of a line, a dark line outlining that bottom part. So it's like a little bit shadowy down there. But then above that, little black dots. I'm not gonna do it on the entire foot area. Also, I wanted to loosely outline that spiral with the black. Very loosely, very thin. And then do some texture right here, these little curved lines just on the right edge of that snail shell. That's a little bit of texture on there as well. Very, very thin black lines going in a curved direction, kind of on the far right part of that shell. A little bit of outline up there. And if you wanna get even more detailed and add a mouth tentacle, you can. I did that, but ended up um, painting over it in the end. So added another one there. Decided I didn't like it. <laughs> then I decided I did not like the third mouthpiece, so I painted over that. So you can use the black. That's the nice thing about these black canvas paintings. You can use the black to paint over mess up parts. You can adjust the shell. I'm gonna add a little bit of white here on the far left. Pop of color in there, a little bit of white right here. A little bit of white on the edge of his tail. And on this mushroom, did little white dots on the top. Just on the top, just a little bit of extra texture there and I didn't do anything else to the other mushroom. And a few more black little texture dots with the white. And it's blending with that black a little bit extra texture in that area. All right, so next we're gonna kind of transition here and do all the greenery in this painting. And so this is Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. And if you need to freshen up your titanium white, do that as well. I'm gonna start by painting the center pieces of all our all of our ferns. If you feel more comfortable drawing these out first, you, you're welcome to. I added a little bit of white to the green to lighten it up, but it's also important to add white into the green so that it'll show up bright and opaque against the canvas. You can see this initial line that I'm painting, it's showing up against the black versus if I just did green with no white in it, it's not gonna show up as bright. So basically I'm just taking the brush and using the tip of the brush to paint all the center fern pieces they spiral at the tip, at the end of it, and then they go down to the bottom of the canvas. So you can paint as many as you want. Um, with these thin lines, you just wanna be uh, careful to make sure you're loading the, that paint right there on the tip of the brush as you load. And it helps to twist your brush when you load as well. So twisting it gets that paint right there on the tip so that you can paint your thin lines. You can also do this step with a paint pen. So if you have a green Posca paint pen and you wanna paint all your middle pieces with that, you're welcome to do it that way. I'm going over some of these initial lines with that second coat, but this one has a little bit more white in it. You can see how much brighter it becomes when you add a little extra white into that color. If you want to get kind of creative and do different colors in these, you can. So that one was kind of hanging down. Um, we can use the blue for some of these.
And then I'm going to do the leaves. So each individual leaf is like an oval pointed shape. You can do leaves on one side, both sides, however you want to do it. It's up to you. So just two little curved lines and then fill it in solid. So I'm altering the color a bit as I go to reload. I'll grab green and different amounts of white in there. So some of the leaves might be darker, some might be lighter. And then as we go around here, I'm just going to do these on the one side. So the leaves are getting smaller as it kind of spirals in on itself. And I'm just going to repeat that process for each of our fern lines. Some of these smaller ones, the leaves might be very simple. You can use some of the blue if you want some of the blue color in your leaves. So again, altering that color, making sure you add a little bit of white in there so that your color shows up bright. Some of these I'm actually going to go back over with a little bit brighter color. So like these ones that kind of are a bit too dark, we can go back with a second coat. If we need to add a bit more white in there, we can. You can even use the yellow for some of that if you want to add some of that cad yellow medium color into some of your green. It just looks nice when you paint a whole bunch of leaves in a painting and you kind of vary the color a little bit so they're not all the same color. You utilize the white, sometimes green, sometimes blue to kind of change the coloration a bit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do our grass next. So with the grass, I'm actually gonna use this number eight round brush. And I like this brush because it's thick and thin at the same time, which is helpful for grass blades that need to be thick on the bottom and thin at the top. So let's go ahead and freshen up our green and titanium white. And we can go ahead and mix green and white together. And then I'm adding a little bit of water in there, to help loosen that color, twist the brush so we have paint on the tip of the brush. We're gonna start out by putting a little bit extra pressure on the bottom, but quickly release the pressure and that makes your grass blade look like it's thick on the bottom and thin at the top. So I did a set of smaller grass blades that are swaying opposite sides of the um, middle mushroom piece. So right here, I'm using mostly the tip. That one ended up being a bunch of um, brighter white colors, but that's okay. Using the tip of that to create the thinner. We put just a little bit extra pressure at first. It's like a, it's a really quick 
sweep motion of the brush. So a little bit of thickness at first and then quickly release the pressure. So some of these grass blades can start getting larger. So we can press down a little bit harder at first, release that so that it goes to a point and just kind of fades out. We can change the direction of these, but when we're painting the grass at the base of the mushroom stems, we want to make it look like the grass is kind of going outwards away from the stem, so opposite. So these grass blades change direction. And our grass blades can overlap parts of our fern and our stems. Um, I didn't do a lot of grass where I'm going to put that fairy door on the larger mushrooms. So I'm going to kind of leave that open for the most part. I'm just very lightly painting these, changing the color. So when you go to reload, you might grab different, a different amount of green or white. Some of these can be longer. It's, sometimes it's helpful to start at the top of the blades. So you can start with a thinner stroke and then press down for your thicker stroke. We want to add a little bit of blue in our grass, we can. I'll add a few more strokes down here at the bottom, but again, and for the most part, I want to leave that open. Next, I'm going to show you how to paint the little fireflies or lightning bugs, or they could be fairies flying around. So the little glowing circle light things all over the background. And it's a really simple technique. Um, so we're gonna be using the yellow. So load some fresh yellow onto your palette. This is the Cad Yellow Medium. Take your finger, dip it in the yellow, but you don't want a lot because if you load too much on your finger, it's just gonna be a big blob. You want just a small amount. And sometimes it just takes kind of trial and error to get that uh, the right amount. So you can kind of wipe it off on your palette before you go and proceed to painting. But you just press and smear outwards and you get this blurry yellow dot that looks brighter in the center and we can make it even brighter in the center by adding white after we apply this first layer. So just really all over the painting. Um, it looks really pretty when you overlap parts of the grass blades with it. And then to really make it look like they're glowing, we can take our round brush, load just a teeny tiny bit of white on our round brush and add like a white dot right in the center of each of those glowing lights. And then um, I just take my finger and kind of smear that as well. 
So you can do that to all of your circle dots. We don't want the white to cover all of that. We just want to make it look like the very center of each of those yellow lights is bright and glowing. And then we can do one white dot in the very, very center, and that's going to be your brightest part of the fairy light. And then I'm just going to go in and add some little dots, perhaps they're stars or little fireflies way in the distance. Um, but it just adds to the whimsical effect, little clusters of just white dots kind of here and there throughout the black background area. And then if you want to take this a step further, you can grab, I grabbed the eight round brush because of the tip, but before the little white dot dries, I'm dragging, I'm not loading new paint on my brush, I'm just dragging that white outwards to create that star effect. And last but not least, we can go ahead and do our little fairy door. So I used the raw umber color to paint a half circle kind of shaped door on the bottom of this larger mushroom. Grab the Mars black outlined for the edging of the door with black. Without rinsing my brush, I just wiped it off and grabbed titanium white just on the tip of the brush. And I'm gonna do vertical lines to create that wood texture in there, but nothing super, super detailed. A little bit of just a few white lines in there that kind of blend with the brown a little bit. And then I did a yellow doorknob using just the tip of the brush, little yellow dot right there on the right, kind of the center part of the door. We can do a window. So with the window, you might want to mix yellow and white together. That's going to make your yellow really bright and opaque to make it look like the lights are on. So little window shape. And then I'm going to use black. You can also use the brown too if you want to outline the outer part of that window and do the window pane vertical line and horizontal line. And that is it. Feel free to add other details to this if you wanna add more windows, door on the other mushroom, but that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.